Hi guys, here's the video going over chapter 10.4, graphing hyperbolas. So before we actually graph a hyperbola, let's talk about the definition. If you'll notice, I already have the definition of an ellipse written at the top. It's a set of all points in a plane such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points is constant. Um, your definition for hyperbolas is very, very similar. It's basically word for word the same. So it's the set of all points in a plane such that the difference of the distances from two fixed points is constant. So pretty much word for word the same as your definition of an ellipse. It's just that now instead of looking at the sum of the distances from two fixed points, your foci, we're now looking at the difference. So if you look at your standard form for your hyperbolas, they again look very similar to ellipses with one key difference. Instead of adding, we are now subtracting. Now with hyperbolas, your graphs are going to look like this. So you'll have um, either directions to the left or to the right. So these hyperbolas would look like that, the ones in blue. Or you have hyperbolas that open up and down. So your graphs are going to do something like that. Um, we're going to find the vertices, we're going to find the foci, uh, transverse axis, conjugate axis, as well as the equations of asymptotes. Now, with the ellipses, you did have a formula for C for the foci. You are going to have a formula for C for the foci for your hyperbolas. Um, it's just that with this one, it is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a graph. So one thing that you should find first is the center, which I didn't actually leave a spot for you to write it down in, but your center is going to help you create the graph similar to how you would do an ellipse. So along the side, I'm going to say my center for this one is at 0, 0, because it's your h and your k, whatever you're adding or subtracting from the x and the y, which in this case we're adding and subtracting nothing. So your center is at 0, 0. Now in order to figure out the direction, what you're looking for is you're looking for which variable comes first. So in this case, my x is first, so that means my um, hyperbolas are going to open to the left and to the right, meaning they open horizontally. So unlike ellipses, where the bigger number underneath the fraction tells you the direction, um, it's with uh, which variable comes first for hyperbolas. Since x is first, um, this one is going to open to the left and to the right. Your vertices are going to be the same for your ellipses. You're using a, um, but again, there is a difference between the ellipses and hyperbolas. For your hyperbolas, your a squared is always first. So a squared is my 4 and b squared is 16. So that means a equals 2 and b equals 4. Now if I am moving left and right, that changes my x coordinates. So when I find my vertices, my y coordinates are going to stay the same as my center. And then for my x coordinates, I'm going to take this value of my center and I'm going to add and subtract a from it. So I have 0 plus 2, that gives me positive 2. 0 minus 2 gives me negative 2. So I have my vertices at 0, 2 and 0, negative 2. I'm going to go ahead and graph that. 0, 2. No, oh, I said that wrong. Uh, 2, 0 and negative 2, 0. Sorry, I misspoke. Alright, so there are my two vertices. I'm going to go ahead and plot my center just for the sake of helping me get the other side um, for graphing your parabola. So with the ellipses, you would graph A and B in both directions. You're going to do the same thing, so we already used up A. 
so that means for B I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So now I'm going to go up and down four units. Now when I go up and down four units, I'm not going to plot a point, I'm actually going to draw a little line. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And what you're going to do with these two green lines, as well as my pink vertices, is I'm going to draw a box that connects these green lines as well as my pink vertices. So with ellipses, you draw the actual ellipse, the curve. Um, with hyperbolas, you're going to draw a box. Now what the box does is it's going to help us create asymptotes in order to sketch the graph of the hyperbola. But before we do that, let's go ahead and find the length of the transverse axis and the conjugate axis. The transverse axis is the distance between your vertices. So that distance was four units. And the conjugate axis is the width of the box, or the length of the box. So in this case, it was eight units. So conjugate axis is eight units. So the transverse axis is two times A. So similar to your major axis for ellipses, conjugate axis is gonna be two times B, which is similar to your minor axis for your hyperbolas. So now that I have that, let's go ahead and draw the asymptotes. So the asymptotes, they're gonna start from the center, so my green dot at the origin, and I'm gonna draw some dashed lines that go through each corner of that box. And what the asymptotes do is they allow us to figure out how wide or how narrow to make these hyperbolas. Um, for the equation of your asymptotes, there's formulas, so I'm going to go back to this slide. Since I have sideways parabolas, I'm going to use this formula right here that says y minus k equals plus or minus b over a times x minus h. So I have y minus k, I'm just rewriting it, equals plus or minus b over a times x minus h. So I have y minus 0 equals plus or minus b over a, so b is 4, a is 2, so 4 over 2 uh, times x minus 0. And of course, 4 over 2 can be reduced, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce that. So 4 over 2 reduces to 2. And that'll be the equation of those two dashed lines. Um, so the last thing we need to find is each focus. So there's a formula for the focus, just like you have for the ellipse. It is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So I have c squared equals a squared is 4, b squared is 16, so c squared equals 20, and then let's take the square root. So c equals plus or minus, I'm going to use my calculator, square root of 20, which is 4.5. And just like with my vertices, my x-coordinates are going to stay the same. And then for, I, I spoke wrong, sorry, my y-coordinates are going to stay the same. Um, and my x-coordinates are going to change based off of what c is. So again, I'm going back to this underlined value. So I'm going to take 0 plus 4.5, which is just 4.5 and 0 minus 4.5, so negative 4.5. And I'm going to go ahead and plot those two points. 1, 2, 3, 4.5. 4.5. And there are my two foci. And again, for your foci, we always graph them because it's part of your definition. Now to actually sketch your hyperbolas, your two curves, you are going to start at each vertex and extend towards the asymptote without actually touching or crossing. And there's your first graph. So it looks like two parabolas um, going in the horizontal direction. And just like with parabolas, your foci is inside um, the actual curve. Um, just, so just make sure that your foci end up being inside your curve instead of inside your box. All right, let's do another one. So for this one, if you'll notice, your equation is not in the correct form, so we're going to get it into the correct form. Since my y is being squared and that one is the positive of my two variables that are being squared, I'm going to put my y's first. 
So I have 9y squared minus 54y minus x squared minus 4x, and then this constant, I'm gonna to move to the other side, and as I do so, I am going to change my sign since it's going to the opposite side. The coefficient in front of y squared, I'm gonna factor out, so I have nine times y squared minus six y, and then I'm gonna insert my box. For my x's, there is a coefficient in front of your x squared, it's negative one, so I'm gonna factor out a negative one from my x's, so that leaves me with x squared plus 4x. And then again, I'm going to insert my box because I need to complete the square. And of course, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Since I factored out the 9 from my first group, I'm going to put a 9 in front of my first box. And then I took out a negative 1, so I'm going to put a negative 1 in front of my second box. To figure out what goes in the box, I'm going to take half of this middle term and square it. So half of negative 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to put 9 in the first box. For my second box, I'm going to take half of 4 and square it. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to put 4 in the second box. Now on the left-hand side, I can go ahead and factor. So that factors to y minus 3 times another y minus 3, or y minus 3 squared. For my x's, that factors as x plus 2 times another x plus 2. And then on my right side, let's go ahead and calculate this out. I have negative 41 plus 9 times 9 minus 1 times 4, and that gives me 36. And of course, your equations are supposed to equal 1, so I'm going to divide everything by 36. So now I have, I'm going to write it over here, so I have y minus 3, quantity squared, 9 goes into 36 four times, minus x plus 2, quantity squared, over 36, equals 1. And now that my equation is in the correct form, I can go ahead and run through all of the pieces of my hyperbola. So my direction, since my y is first, that means my hyperbolas are opening up and down. For my vertices, I need to know what a is as well as the center. So a is, um, a squared is 4, so a is 2. b squared is 36, so b is and then my center is at, my x-coordinate is negative 2, because I'm getting that from my x, and my y-coordinate is positive 3. Now, since my vertices are opening up and down, that creates vertical movements, so all of my x-coordinates from my center are going to stay the same, and that's the same for your foci as well. And then for my y-coordinates, I'm going to use the y-coordinate of my center, and then I'm going to add and subtract a from it. So I have, here's my a, I have 3 plus 2, that gives me 5, and then 3 minus 2, that gives me 1. So my two vertices are at negative 2, 5, and negative 2, 1. So let's go ahead and graph that. I'm going to graph my center as well, so negative 2, 3. And then my vertices, I have one at negative 2, 5, and negative 2, 1. For the other side, to create the box, I'm going to use B. So in this case, B is 6, so I'm going to move left and right 6 units. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then now that I have that drawn, I can go ahead and connect my pink vertices to the green lines to create the box. And again, the box is necessary for your asymptotes, um, which I'll go ahead and graph now. So again, your asymptotes go through each corner of the box. All right. So length of the transverse axis, that's the distance between my vertices, which in this case is four units. 
length of my conjugate axis is 2 times b, or it's the length across from your box, so that's 12 units. And then for my asymptotes, we do have a formula, but again, since this one is opening up and down, we are going to use this one that has the plus or minus a over b. So it's still y minus k, so y minus 3 equals plus or minus a over b, so 2 over 6, and then x minus h, h was negative 2, so x plus 2, quantity squared. Oh wait, no, that's not squared. Um, the h and the k come from your center, by the way. Um, that should say 2 over 6, not 2 over 3. Let's fix that. So 2 over 6. Um, and that can be reduced to one third. All right. And then last but not least for my foci, I'm going to do c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So I have c squared equals 4 plus 36. So c squared is 40. So c equals, let's take the square root of 40, which is 6.3. So again, I'm going to go back and use my 3, which was the circled K, um, and then I'm going to take this 3 plus 6.3 and 3 minus 6.3. So 3 plus 6.3 is 9.3, 3 minus 6.3 is negative 3.3. So you can graph those. Uh, 9.3 is over here, and negative 3.3, and there are your foci. And then finally, to graph your hyperbola, I'm going to start at each vertex and extend towards the asymptotes without actually touching or crossing them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you graph hyperbolas.